Hi guys, I'm Paul McWhorter and I am here with lesson number 12 on using Python with Arduino. And we're kind of starting out with where we ended up on lesson number 11 and that is we are streaming and graphing live data from the Arduino connected to an Adafruit BMP180 most excellent pressure and temperature sensor. It's taking the measurement, it's streaming that data over the serial port. Python is reading it from the, uh, the serial port and then making a live graph. And this is where we ended up in, uh, in uh, lesson number 11. And just want to recap one of the kind of neat things about this sensor. It is really, really, really sensitive. And so you see if I put my finger on it, I can see the temperature going up there in the red and then the pressure changing. But watch this. If I hold it down here and I hold it up, what happens? The pressure drops. Why does the pr pressure drop? There's less up air up here than there is down here. If I put it on the floor, that was about a five feet change. And look at that, the pressure goes up because there's more air on the floor. Come up here, pressure goes down. And so that is pretty neat, just about four feet change <coughs> in height. And I can see a discernible signal that I can really delineate. Uh, I can really delineate between uh, the, the uh, noise and the data and about a four foot change in elevation. And so I think that that is just pretty, pretty neat. And so kind of the, the question that that brings up then is, can we use this data stream that we have coming off of this BMP 180 and create sort of a height o meter where I can measure how high I am above the floor based on the measurement that I'm getting from the pressure sensor? And the answer is yes, we can do that because pressure does depend on elevation. And when I first started this, I thought that it was going to be real easy. But then I started seeing the math and the physics are a little bit more complicated <coughs> than what I uh, had originally anticipated. And so I want to kind of go through with you the math in this one. And then in lesson number 13, we'll actually go in and we'll change our program to incorporate that math. But that was a little bit too much to try to do the math and the programming in one lesson. So we're just going to do the math today. And what we're going to have to do is, to keep the math manageable, we're going to have to make some simplifying assumptions. Okay, But what we are trying to do is we're trying to approximate a height change from a pressure change. And we're going to do this all relatively based on a change in pressure. We get a change in height. And that way, as far as we are concerned for this project, <coughs> the ground is an elevation of zero. Okay, so we're going to call the ground in my floor here, my floor <coughs> in this room, I define as zero. Okay, and so then this is the way that the math is going to go. That uh, we're going to have to make a simplifying assumption. And the simplifying assumption that we're going to make is, is that the temperature is constant over our range of the experiment. Well, it's pretty constant. Let's look here. I'm looking at like I can easily see this is 80, 81. I could see, you know, a, a kind of a fraction of a degree here. And it's, it's, it's right that the temperature does change as we go through this room, all right, that if I got way up there, it would be a little bit more than down on the floor. But as far as what I can measure between there and it's about as far as I can lift it up here, I'm not really seeing any change in the temperature that's discernible. And so for the sake of this analysis, where we're going to be doing things in my room, we're going to assume that the temperature does not change with elevation. What you have to see is, though, that this is a simplifying assumption. And if we wanted to, say, go beyond this, and when we start using this sensor to calculate altitudes for our high-altitude balloon experiments, we're going to have to go in and do some more careful math. But for today, we're going to do the math that just assumes the temperature is the same. And we will be doing that more careful math, but I just want to get a first feel for it today. And the easiest way to get the first feel for it, the, the, the first kind of look at it is to assume that the temperature is constant over the range of the experiment. And so here's kind of the parameters and here's how we're going to look at it. Okay, We're going to have the ground here and there's a pressure on the ground and that we're going to call P0. And there's also a temperature on the ground and that temperature we're going to call T0. And then if the ground is zero, you know, my floor here, the floor, the floor in my room, when you do it, you can make it the floor in your room. The height above that floor, we can say is H. 
and then up at H we have a pressure H. Okay. Now we don't have a TH up here because we assume that the temperature is the same. So we have one temperature and that's T0. <coughs> With this simplifying assumption, what we can say is, is that the pressure at that height is equal to the pressure at the ground, P0, times the exponential of this thing minus G times M times H divided by R divided by T0. What are these numbers? Okay, pH is the pressure at the height. That would be when I hold the thing up here. All right. P0 is the pressure on the ground, or for me, the pressure on the floor. What is G? G is the acceleration of gravity. And I'm working in feet today. And what you got to do is you've got to make sure that you're careful with your units so that all your units are going to play nicely together. I'm going to work in feet. And so because I'm working in feet, the acceleration of gravity is going to be 32.17 feet per second squared. M is the molar mass of air. That is, how much does one mole, what is the mass of one mole of air? And the answer for that is 28.96 pounds per pound mole. Okay, then we have R, and R is sort of like a universal gas constant, and in the in the units we're working in to work in feet and pounds, it is 89,494.6 pound feet square per pound mole degree Kelvin second squared. And then T0 is the ground temp in Kelvin. Okay, so I kind of had to be careful with all of my units there. But now we should be able to calculate pH based on P0 and, uh, a, uh, and a uh, known H. The problem is I don't want to calculate pH. I'm going to measure pH. So what is it I want to calculate? I want to calculate height because I want to make a heightometer where I can raise the thing up and down. And as I raise it up and down, it'll show me how high above the floor we are. And so if I'm going to want to make a heightometer, I want to calculate H based on everything else. I can measure pH. I can measure zero. And then down here in these constants, I know G, M, R, and T. So I should be able to calculate H. But we got to do some algebra. Okay, if you're in my Algebra 2 class or if you've taken a good Algebra 2 class, you should be able to follow along on the math, uh, on the math uh, that I'm going to be showing you here. If you're a freshman, you probably haven't quite gotten to this math yet, but just sit back and watch it and know what's coming up when you get into Algebra 2. <coughs> okay, we started with this equation, pH is equal to P0 exponential of minus GMH over RT, and we want to solve for H. So we want to get H by itself. Well, what's the first thing that we can do? We can divide both sides of the equation by P0, and then at least we just end up with the exponential by itself. And so then we end up with PH over P0, because we're dividing both sides by P0, is equal to exponential minus GMH over RT naught. Okay. Now, we got to get the H out from that exponential. We got to get that exponential off of there. Well, how can I get rid of an exponential? That's an e to the. How do I get rid of an e to the? I take the log of it. So if I take the log of an exponential, the exponential will drop out and I'll just be left with this term. But if I take the log of this side, I have to take the log of this side. So I have the natural log of this side, natural log of pH over P0 is equal to the natural log of this side, which uh, neutralizes that exponent, and I am just ended up with minus GMH over RT naught. I want to solve for H, and so what do I have to do? I have to multiply both sides by RT and divide by both sides by minus GM, and then I'll get H by itself. So I have H is equal to multiplying by RT. I have R times T over G times N, so I'm inverting that to get it over here. So H is minus RT over GM times the ln of PH over P0. I am getting H by itself. I don't like to have this negative here. And you know one of the powers of what one of the rules of logarithm, you can take a negative out front and you can pop it up as an exponent or whatever constant you have here, you can pop over here as an exponent. <clears throat> and so I take that minus one and I move it up here. So I have H is RT over GM 
natural log of the pressure at the height divided by the pressure at the floor to the minus 1. Well, taking a term to the minus 1 inverts it, and so I can make it h is equal to rt over gm natural log p0 over ph. And let's see, remember p0 was uh, p0 on the floor was larger than p0 up here, and so or p up here, so this is going to be a number greater than 1, so this number is going to be positive, and h is positive. So just check and make sure I didn't do something goofy with the sign. Yes, it works. I like to do little checks like that when I'm doing math. Now what we need to do is we need to check the units. And if I put all my units in, do I end up with something in feet? Just to make sure that I haven't made a mistake and that I'm using the right constants. Well, a pressure divided by a pressure, it's not going to matter which units I use because the units are going to cancel or they're going to divide out to, to make one. And so all of this is unitless. Now let's look. What is the unit on R? R is pound foot squared per pound mole degree uh, second squared. So that's pound foot squared, pound mole, degree Kelvin, second squared. And then T, the T is just Kelvin. So I have Kelvin. And then the G here is in feet per second squared. That's an acceleration. And the M we learned over here the M is in pounds per pound mole, and so I put in the units pound per pound mole. Okay, now let's look at this. The pound uh, per pound mole, pound, pound, mole, will cancel pound, pound, mole. So those two terms cancel. This Kelvin cancels that Kelvin. This second squared cancels that second squared. So I end up with foot squared over foot. Foot squared over foot is feet. And so all of these constants are right and my units are right because I end up with feet, which is what I was going for. And so then what we can say is we can actually plug in these constants that I gave you here, the ones we know. And what I can say is H is 89,494.6, which was our R, times our T, which we're going to measure, divided by 32 feet per second squared for the acceleration of gravity, and then 28.96 pounds per pound mole for the molarity of the air, the molar mass of the air, okay? And we put those numbers in, and then we sort of multiply them out, and what we end up with is H is equal to 98.57 times the temperature on the ground times the natural log of the pressure on the ground divided by the pressure at the height. So I measure a pressure at height, and I measure a pressure on the ground, okay? And I divide the pressure on the ground by the pressure at the height, multiply by the temperature. Very important, the temperature has to be in Kelvin, okay? The temperature has to be in Kelvin, and so temperature in Kelvin times the natural log of the pressure on the ground divided by the pressure at the height times 98.57, and that should give me, that should give me the height. Okay, this is an easy way for us to just play around with it in the room. When we do our experiments outside with high altitude ballooning, we're going to have to go back and we're going to have to re-derive this equation more carefully, taking into account that the temperature at the height is not the same as the temperature on the ground, and so we're going to have to make, uh, make adjustments for that. What we're going to do in the next lesson coming up, we will be programming up the Arduino to take those pressure measurements that we're making and then measure the height. See you then, Paul McWhorter. Tune in for the next lesson. Subscribe to this channel. Maybe give me a thumbs, thumbs up every once in a while. Talk to you guys later.